Bullshittery of the Week. Shortcast by Andy and Dan. The Andy and Dan Shortcast contains strong language throughout, so, you know, avert your ears, children. Kitties. What? Sneeze? Hmm? Did you say kitties? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that? <laughs> okay, um, welcome to the Andy and Dan Shotcast episode 25. This is. Um, today is going to be a little bit different because Andy has left the country. <laughs> so I've got a guest host, and today's guest host is. Oh, am I supposed to introduce myself? <laughs> yeah, that's your, that's your cue. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Angela. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for listening. <laughs> that's the end of the that's show. It. That's it. That's all you need. So, yeah, basically, um, you're going to be standing in for Andy and just rambling with me today for today's episode. I guess that's fine. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. I'm not really that good of friends with you, so it's uh, going to be a little bit weird. Yeah, people who would know my channel, like who have even watched any of my videos, <laughs> will have seen uh, Angela on it before, and that's like the only time we've spoken before. Yeah, I've never talked to Dan before other than that. This is just kind of like a get-to-know-you kind of thing, like an icebreaker <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> the weird thing about it is Angela is actually my son, so it's like... It's like yeah, a, it's really weird because we um, he gave birth to me through the p computer. I came out of the printer. And then <laughs> I'm actually his mom. Yeah. So there's just a lot of family drama it's going a lot. on. You should see the state of the family tree. It's confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Dan Angela, Dan Angela, Dan Angela, Dan Angela, Dan Angela. Then Boris is thrown in there sometimes. And then like the ancestors link back to the front and it's just like a big maze. <laughs> it's like, yeah. doesn't, just doesn't make it's sense. It's fine. Just throw it in the fire. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't even see it anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, Angela, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Angela Fullard. Um, I'm a comic book artist and illustrator. Uh, if you want to check out some of my work, I can be found on Instagram at Angela Oddling and also um, patreon.com slash Angela Oddling. Yes. And if you're on Tapas, I have a nice little webcomic called Detached. So there you go. Yeah, you should check out all those things. They are very good. Yeah, and you should pay me a lot of money yeah, for, for nothing. You should just give me lo loads and loads of money for doing nothing. You should donate uh, the million dollars to, to a Patreon and you get a signed sticker if you do that. You don't, it's not even signed. I didn't even make it. I go to the dollar store and I just buy them from there. It's just it's just, <laughs> it's just a sticker of like a banana with a, a smiley yeah. face on it. <laughs> Giving a it's thumbs a, up. It's, a st it's not even a sticker of a banana. It's a sticker like off of a banana <laughs> when you go to a grocery store. <laughs> it's just like the brand of the banana just like yeah. peeled off. <laughs> thanks, thanks for subscribing to my Patreon. I hope that you enjoy this exclusive sticker. That's <laughs> disgusting. It just doesn't even stick anymore. <laughs> it's just like... It's like a little bit of banana skin like on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, you just like tore a trunk of the banana off and just sent that in the post. <laughs> I don't even package my st my rewards well. I just send them in like a little Ziploc bag <laughs> and the address right on the, on the bag. <laughs> so um, that's the promo done <laughs> for your Patreon. Yeah, so go, ahead, um, so go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I'm just a full-time illustrator. She does all sorts of crazy art stuff. Check out all the things she does. And um, what are you working on at the moment? What am I working on right now? Yeah. Uh, mostly just detached stuff. I'm really busy with that. Mm -hmm. I, started a, I started a new mini-comic called Introspective Demon, which oh, is yeah. going to be pretty neat. I'm excited for that. Other than that, just lots of lots of commissions. I have like two anthologies coming up. Um, 
doing some in inside pages. Cool. How how about you, Daniel Son? I heard I heard you're a real fancy artist. <laughs> they patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I just technically I'm finished that book now, so uh, there's an update. I think the last episode I recorded with Andy, we talked about the book because it was like crunch time around then. So I'm finished, pretty much. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. I'm, I'm free. <laughs> yeah. I'm super proud of you that you're not in book hell anymore. Yeah, it was going to be intense with the deadline and stuff, so that's good. Um, other than that, just I've got to start planning for all my commissions and stuff. I've got about quite five plus lined up, so I need to like get started on some of those. That's pretty much it, really. Yeah, I heard that you you're really busy doing um <laughs> twenty twenty dollar adoptables on DeviantArt right now. Yeah, I hear that that's, that's yeah, your that, big. That, that that's my big earn it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I make the big bucks. Wolf and amphibian species splices are half off adoptables right now. <laughs> But seriously, what even are adoptables? I've never got that. <laughs> I guess I really don't know. I never bought one before because, oh, I'm not gonna, you know. Is it just like someone Step designs? What? Is it like someone just designs the character, and then you can buy it off them, and then it's like your character because you're adopting it. I guess I I think it's more of like an avatar thing, or like somebody. Like what you said, like someone designs a character and then they buy it, but instead of it being yours you like get to just have it on your profile <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's it's the internet and it's digital so you could just screenshot and just have it anyway yeah you could just steal it just and just steal. be like i t i this is mine i made it <laughs> i took your child it's not i don't even need to adopt it <laughs> i wish that real adoption was like that i wish that you could just screenshot children <laughs> just take a photo on your phone and just like it's my yeah. child now <laughs> My son. This is my Not son. much of a talker, is he? <laughs> this is my son. Screenshot seventeen. Man, oh. oh god. Oh god, Manny's here. Oh Jesus. It's us of a special guest, it's Manny. Yeah, we also have two oh. other special guests, Manny and Honey, my cats. Yeah, tell They're us about them. Uh, they're both terrible demons. Uh, <laughs> Manny has permanent... He just has permanent illness where he sneezes all the time. So no. there's just boogers everywhere. <laughs> um, and Honey's a little meatball. That's about it. Yeah, she's getting a little... A little, little Don't better. talk about my cat, Noah. <laughs> You're not her mom. Well, it could be. I haven't checked the family tree. <laughs> Probably like their grandparents or something. Oh, mm -hmm. Honey, Grandpa Dan says that you're getting a little fat. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's been feeding you animal crackers again. <laughs> Five pounds of animal crackers a day makes keeps a doctor away. <laughs> oh dear. Um, do do. So yeah, so you're just doing Patreon stuff at the moment. Yeah. How's the Patreon stuff going? Because you've been doing like daily stuff. Have you got like a schedule set up now? Yeah, it's still really tough. Like I, um, for those of you like who, I mean, I'm assuming that everyone knows who Patreon, or what Patreon is. But if you don't, it's basically just like a subscription service. So like crowdfunding, but instead of sending all your money in to get like one lump sum, you people subscribe over a monthly basis and you can support the creator that way, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's really fucking hard. Like it's so yeah. hard. It's so fucking hard because you can, you're, you have like different tiers of rewards. So like $1, you know, you get a thank you and you get to see some posts and $5 and you get something extra. And then $10, you get something extra after that. And, it really just turns into like a full time job. It's, yeah, yeah. So like the first time that I tried it, I think that I I tried like three different things and they all just sort of failed. Um just because it was so hard to keep up with. 
Um, but this time, like, I have a set schedule for everything, so it makes it a little easier. Yeah. Plus, the first time you did it, you were, like, really ambitious. Like, you did, like, the odd box things and stuff like that. Yeah, the first time I did it, I did, like, the $35 pledge, which people get, um, I called it an odd box, because my characters are called oddlings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but basically, they just got, like, a box full of, like, little tiny art things. Um, but it was just too much work, because uh, they would get, like, a print and, like, a traditional piece of art and a sculpture and a pin and whatever. Um, and that was just too much work for me to keep up with. Um, yeah. I mean, this it's a, time, uh, what's that? So I was gonna say it's still a good idea. It was just like to start with, it was like getting ahead of yourself a bit. I think it's a good idea, but I think it's a good idea to be like very limited, and also you need to sort of have things already made and planned out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Whereas, like, I'm, I work full time, you know, at another job, so I, I'm doing things day by day. So it's easier for me to just stick to digital stuff, and then like really small, um physical things which mm -hmm. i do have a ten dollar tier right now but it's just like you know a four by six art print which yeah. is signed and exclusive so yeah. but yeah it's, it's going good yeah you'll get there you just, you have to market it too yeah promo is like a massive part of it isn't it what's that i just said promotion is like a huge part of well most things really yeah you pretty much just have to have the link like everywhere you are or else nobody knows that you have one because nobody just goes on patreon like what what am i gonna subscribe to today <laughs> yeah it's like your daily website i'm just gonna go on yeah. patreon and throw my money at shit <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if people actually do that they probably do i'm sure there's people that are just like i need to find something that i like I just, I, you, hold on, I'm sorry, Manny's up here. I got, I'm sorry, everybody. My cat's being too crazy. Um, he jumped up onto the highest part of my house. <laughs> and I gotta get him. Honey. I'm not allowed to be up here. Oh my god. It's <laughs> just carnage everywhere. <laughs> oh, hold on. Can you edit this out? <laughs> Alright, I'm back. Sorry, my cat jumped up onto like my really high bookshelf and there's a bunch of pictures and like candle holder and a lamp up there and he always does this whenever I'm talking on my computer because he's annoyed that I'm not paying attention to <laughs> And then I went to grab him off and he jumped onto my guitar, so. My god, he's always jumping on your guitar. I know, he's insane. And he always, he always tends to go for your like valuable possessions. <laughs> Yeah, he like I have this like really expensive fluorite sphere, and uh, it's in like the most random like place in my house, and somehow he found a way to find it. <laughs> he found it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he always finds a way. Jeez, mm -hmm. what's Honey doing? She's okay. She's a little angel. I don't know where she is right now. Probably eating something. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just stuck in the animal cracker tub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aw, she's just a little bit round, that's all. She's cute. I, I love one. I love them both. I guess I love them both. <laughs> <laughs> so, just have them live in your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just housemates, really. Yeah, they're just basically my roommate. Well, no, Honey is like my baby angel, and Manny is just like, I guess I'll let you live here because you're Honey's brother, but you got to start paying rent every month. Yeah, he's the rebellious teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well. Okay. Oh. No. So, um, do do do. So. On the shortcast, we mainly talk about game stuff, like, not always, hello? I'm here, okay. I'm listening to you. Okay, <laughs> you went like deadly oh, silent. You have a beautiful voice. <laughs> 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 Thank you. It's a, uh, it's like a cheese grater along a blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, mine is like, you know, a congested toddler, always. <laughs> but together. 
we make the greatest show. <laughs> yeah, together we make the greatest voice that there ever could be. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, it's like a, we mainly talk about game stuff most of the time. Or like what games we're looking forward to. So, I was going to talk to you about games in general. Because like you're the first time in on the show, I thought we could talk about your gaming history. And we could go back and see what games you're into and stuff. Um, I don't know anything about video games. I've never played a video game in my entire life. Oh my god, that's like such a lie. Because no, no, no. I only, I only play Parcheesy. So. Parcheesy. <laughs> what even is Parcheesy? I, you know, I really don't actually know what it is, but I always. Like in school, in high school, everyone would always be like, "We're gonna play a nice wholesome game of Parcheesi tonight." <laughs> trying to tell me that they were gonna have some kind of party. So let's see what it is, because I actually have no idea what it is. Yeah, I only uh, know the name, to be honest. Uh, Parcheesi, Parcheesi, Parcheesi. Um, Parcheesi is a brand name American adaptation of the Indian cross and circle board game. Pachisi? I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry if I butchered it. Published by Parker <laughs> Brothers and Winning Moves. Wait a minute. Cross and circle board game? Yes. Isn't that just like noughts and crosses? I don't know what that is. Don't is that you? some kind of British thing? No, I thought it was like a universal thing. It's just that thing where you do like a grid on a paper and then you put, you have to try and get three circles or three crosses in a row, depending on which one you are. And the person uh, has to stop you. That's fucking not what I'm talking well, okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that's not Parcheesi, damn. <laughs> yeah, that's not Parcheesi. Get a life. Just get with the times. You don't even know anything about Parcheesi. That's exactly the same, but you Americans call it Parcheesi because it's like a zany name. Yeah, ooh, Parcheesi! <laughs> ooh! <laughs> party time! <laughs> party with some cheese. Call yeah. it Party Cheesy. Yeah, party Cheese. I like how we start talking about games, and the first game we talk about is Parcheesi, a game we've never played. <laughs> I, that is the only game that I play, actually. Sorry. Parcheesi, par Yahtzee. <laughs> Connect 4. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were talking about. You were talking about Connect Four. No, the, right? the the thing I was talking about is like that, but it's literally just like on paper. Yeah, it's not. It's not come with a board. <laughs> oh. Parcheesi yeah. sounds like they, they took the idea and just thought, you know what? Let's turn it into a whole board game, even though it's like the most basic thing ever. <laughs> that's really wow. that's really dragged that out and <laughs> make millions. Yeah. Damn. I wonder how like what the net worth of the fucking Connect for <laughs> industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the connect in the connect four industry is really booming right now. <laughs> it's not even the board game industry. It's just like the connect four industry. <laughs> <laughs> All my investments in the connect four. <laughs> <laughs> Stocks plummeting in the connect four. <laughs> And then one day, like, a guy comes in the boardroom and he's like, I've got this um, groundbreaking new idea. And he's like, shows it on this PowerPoint and he's like, Connect 5. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's just, like, outraged. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, David. <laughs> Get out of the boardroom. <laughs> I've had this family-owned business for 200 years. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, you want to talk about video games? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but we could just do this for like another 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, in video games then. <laughs> so, what's your favorite video game, Jan? <laughs> um, well, I don't have one. I have like a million. Wait a minute, I was asking you. <laughs> I was asking you. Well, I like so many games. Well, here's the thing. I'm a very casual gamer. I love video games, but I'm a very casual gamer, so I'm very picky with the games that I play. Yeah. So I like not very many games. Well, right now. I'm kind of the same, to be honest. I, I like I like certain games that I play to to death, and like while like hundreds of other games are coming out, I'll just be playing that one game, but I'll like yeah. do everything with it, and then like you know, so that's kind of what sort of game I am. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, so you know, I play games. I play games. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, you're a gamer gal. Yeah, I'm a gamer girl. I'm not like the other girls. So. <laughs> don't even time. tell me that I am. Don't. When was the last time you took a selfie with like a control and it's not even plugged in? <laughs> but you just, yeah, like, I just wear a, I just wear my bra. Just in your pants, <laughs> just <laughs> the cable like wrapped around your leg. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, how did this happen? <laughs> 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 add, add me on PlayStation or whatever. I don't know. I don't have a PlayStation. PlayStation <laughs> control with like a Wii in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like nothing. <laughs> The part cheesy board. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding the part cheesy board off and bits going everywhere. Whoops. I'm a gamer girl. Oops. <laughs> Add me on part cheesy network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just like lay naked on a part cheesy board with like, <laughs> just like oh no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a giant, a giant part cheesy board. Hashtag just gamer girl things. Just game, yeah, just gamer girl things. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we're we'll actually answering any questions there. Um, what are my favorite games? I like. Well, people who heard the show will know I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, Kingdom Hearts, some sort of cheesy ass JRPG games. Yeah, those are fucking stupid. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really like them. I really like them. <laughs> I know you. You also like a um, platforming games, which I also like, like Spyro. I was trying to get around to that slowly, but I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> I'm just gonna say Spyro. Yeah, you just both really like Spyro the Dragon, and I know all you haters out there think it's boring. It's just a collect the gemstone game, but guess what? You can all fuck yourself. I don't care what you think. <laughs> That's the official statement. <laughs> yeah, that's Spyro the Dragon's. Uh, a slogan. Spokesperson, you just come out yeah. and say that. Oh uh, yeah, we're planning on uh, releasing the remastered version of Spyro the Dragon in 2019. Um, everyone also says that it's a boring game where you just collect gemstones. <laughs> you can all uh, fuck yourself. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Spyro that you like? Um, so like as a kid, I guess it was. Um, I, I was really weird when, I, I don't know if I'm the only kid that was like this or if you're just like every kid is like this when they play a game, but you kind of like imagine yourself inside of the game and like create mini games for yourself. So like Spyro had so many different like atmospheres that you could kind of just like explore for a long time and just sort of make believe while you were playing it. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. That's what I liked whenever I was a kid. Um, as an adult, honestly, I just like playing it and being like, I know where all this fucking stuff is because I'm the Spyro champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so relate to that. Like, uh, yeah, me and Andy doing a Spyro Let's Play at the moment. You can check that out on his channel, V Drew Gamer. Search it out, post a link later or something. But yeah, we're doing a Spyro Let's Play. We're playing for the original trilogy and like, when we started playing it, I like knew like that first level in Spyro, the first world, you just, it's so iconic, like, because you, if you replayed it, you just know it, like, back in hand. So, like, I was, like, trying to pretend like it didn't know as much as it did. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to be that person, like, I was telling, I was telling you the other day that, like, there's a very specific spot where I know that a lot of people can't find, like, these three red gemstones, and it's just like, you just gotta glide up with a fucking sparkly thing and then <laughs> go across to the ledge, and then they're by the three trees in the back, idiot, I don't even <laughs> see them there, what are you, stupid? <laughs> You're not a true Sparrow fan. <laughs> <laughs> and you just are, like, 30 years old, just like, saying that's like yeah. a 12 year old kid. <laughs> I just like take the controller away from him. Give me that. You don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> you're not a true gamer girl. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we like Spyro. Yeah, we like Spyro. What's your favorite what's your favorite one? Um, Out of the four. The four. The first four, not the first three. Well, I never played the fourth one. Well I actually what? I did Do you mean? Actually, no, I did play it because Andy got it, and I played a bit of his, but it was like years after I'd played the trilogy, so like, 
I don't know. It, it felt weird, like, at first. But I, w I probably will play back, play back and play it. But I think... Well, that could also be because it sucks. It's terrible. Is it the fourth one? I thought the fourth one was the one where it was, like, very similar to the original three, but, like, you changed bits it, in it. It is very similar, but it is fucking garbage. Wow, what's wrong with it? I think Andy really liked that one. <laughs> Andy! Okay, there is... Okay, so, in the first game... You got Nasty North, the second game is Ripto's Rage, and then yeah. the third one is the Sorceress, I forget what it's called, though. Yeah. Year of the Dragonfly? Mm -hmm. Year of the Dragon or something? Yeah. yeah. Year of the Dragon, and then Enter the Dragonfly is the fourth one, right? Is it, I thought so, another one that's the fourth one. Was it, what? Was it Enter the Dragonfly, the fourth one? I think, I think it, it is. Because they, um, they brought out, like, so many, like, Spires on PS2, like, quite close together that I, like... I always forget yeah, what, what I never doing. played any of those ones because that's whenever they started introducing like Cinder and stuff. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. I don't even know much about him, but I just saw like you just see him like on DeviantArt and stuff, and I'm just like I don't want to know to be honest. Well, I think what happened with Enter the Dragonfly is that's the first one that wasn't um, developed by Activision. I want to say. Oh uh, yeah, so do you like it was it was. In other developers. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, no, it's so um, Insomniac. Sorry, was the, the makers of it. Yeah. 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 Insomniac. That's that's it. Um, but like they, Ripto is back. So like Ripto is the villain again. Okay. And there's literally this. This doesn't explain why the game is so bad, but there's literally a part of the last. <laughs> battle where you're fighting Ripto and he goes, Ah! My life bar is almost empty! And it's just like, okay. <laughs> just just like ruined the whole series yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> one go. <laughs> just the whole thing was just like, cool, well, I guess I don't not go play Spires anymore. <laughs> you just acknowledge it, it's a game and you've just ruined it. Yeah, yeah, like if you're gonna break the fourth wall, maybe do it in a way that doesn't suck. Yeah, in a more subtle and clever way instead of just <laughs> yelling about the life bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... I, it, like, it also was just like they took a character that was so lovable, because like, I really liked Ripto. Yeah. Um, and he just like didn't have the same like spunk. I don't know, it's, the, the, early, the early Spyros had like the same sort of like <laughs> stupid 90s cool guy egg yeah. that like Sonic the Hedgehog had that made them hilarious um, but like once it got past that and they, they just started like trying too hard to make it different Do you know what it was? It was um, Insomniac who had that because as soon as he started making Sparrow he started making Ratchet and Clank and like oh, yeah, the, ra yeah. the Ratchet and Clank humor is like very similar and that's why I like Ratchet and Clank and going to that Yeah I don't I it's it's like a super it's a trope for sure, but it's one that I really liked, and I don't know if it has anything to do with it. it's just like the era that I grew up in, which a lot of people did, I guess. Nineties think... kids will remember. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Number ten will shock you. <laughs> no, but that company is great because like these they made like are they, I think it's someone else who's making will will be making the Spyro remake, won't they? Like, you know, the pe isn't it pe I, people who made the Crash one was, like, an outside developer or something? I guess. I actually, I have no idea. I have not, um, I have not played the Crash remake yet. Um, I haven't, but Andy has, and he says it's awful, control-wise. Really? Well, look, they've oh, messed, really? they messed with the controls, like, they made the controls in, like, 1 and 2, like, 3, and it makes it really hard to judge jumping even worse than it was originally. Oh, shit. So, like, everyone... Because I think you've heard that it's, like, really difficult. Like, well, the, the first games were hard. Yeah. Well, apparently, um, it's, like, even, like, worse than the originals. But, like, in a yeah. slightly different way, but, like... The first Crash Bandicoot is, like, unfucking beatable for me. Like, yeah. I can't... I, it's so hard. I, I don't remember if I beat it. I think that I did, but I had help. The second game I beat, but it was super hard. The third yeah. one I beat, for sure, but, uh... That one wasn't as hard, no, but three, it, it is my favorite. Yeah, three was the easiest, but it had like the most, I think, the most memorable like story and like 
levels and stuff. Yeah. And, and it's weird because Crash like isn't super plot like based. It's just no. a really fun game. Yeah, it is just like mm -hmm. pure fun. Mm -hmm. What was I gonna say? Hey, I was gonna say go back to like Ratchet and Clank because the they think they rebooted it. You know, and he brought that really mediocre film about it. Yeah, I uh, do remember that. I almost watched it. I haven't I watched, watched it. it for like, I watched it for like five minutes and I was like, I can't handle this at all. And, <laughs> it was really bad. And he said he liked it, but like, I mean, he's played all the games, but like after I sort of like recommended him and he like, he got into him after like later on with the HD remakes and stuff. But I, cause, cause I've like grown up playing him. And they're like a, a series that's really influential on me. I can't watch the film. Because yeah. I think it'll just like break my heart. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't like it, but and I'm I'm laying this I'm laying this on you as a surprise. I haven't ever played a Ratchet and Clank game before. <gasps> I thought you had. You've been, I'm sure you've talked to me about it before. My um my brother played them. Oh, so okay. like so like I secondhand saw them, but I've never actually played one myself. Yeah. Well, you should. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe one day, maybe maybe one day. Uh, the thing they, they they made um, Jack and Daxter too, right? Naughty, that's Naughty Dog. Yeah, that's Naughty. Insomniac made Spyro and Crash, and then Naughty Dog made. No, sorry. Oh, Naughty no, Dog made Crash. Yeah, Insomniac made. Spyro and Ratchet, and then Naughty Dog made Crash, and then Jack and Daxter. That was it. Yeah, that's right. They had the okay. two as sort of like platforming game because they were dead close. Then developers were like, you'd always get Spyro demos and Crash games and stuff. Yeah, there used to be. Do you have? Did you? Do you guys have Pizza Hut? Did you have Pizza Hut? Yeah, we yeah we have Pizza we, Hut. We um Pizza Hut used to do like the promo where you would get a PlayStation demo whenever you ordered like a large pizza or something from yeah, them. That's and right. My nana always used to order large pizzas, and we would get every single like PlayStation demo. And I remember the one had um. Like the water, the first water level from Crash Three. Why can't I remember what it, it's called? Crash Warped, right? Yeah, Crash Warped. Yeah. Yeah, I, it was like the wa the first water level from Warped, and then it also had a Spyro the Dragon demo on it. But like, I had both of those games, so I don't know why I was playing the demo. <laughs> I know, yeah, you just you're just really excited that you thought you got a free demo, so you're just like loving it. You know what other um, demo I got from PlayStation? Did you ever play Medieval? No, I think they're doing a remake of that as well, aren't they? They are they doing a remake of that? I'm sure I heard something, but I'm not. I definitely. will flip the fuck out. I love that game. That, that game is so fun. Is that the guy with the skull head? Yeah. Yeah. His name is Dan too. <gasps> I should play it. Yeah, you should play it. Why is it so good? I need to sell it to me. I don't know. <laughs> it's just well, you know, I like like. All like goth stuff because I'm a goth kid. <laughs> <laughs> you like your spooky boys. <laughs> yeah, I like spooks. Um, but I don't know. It was just really fun. Um, I, to be completely honest with you, I don't remember a whole lot of it because I only played the demo of that, but the okay. demo let you get really far for some reason. <laughs> yeah. At least I remember it like being a long time whenever I was a kid it probably was only like a fucking level and I'm just stupid but yeah. um I just I really like the aesthetic of it I really like the story um the characters are fun the puzzles are fun um it's difficult enough so I don't know that was a, it was a good one I think it was that thing that era when they used to do platform games and they were just it seemed they were just made just for fun and like the design aspect of them was like really imaginative and like over the top but it was like really yeah. appealing. Yeah. It just it just seemed more simplistic and like I don't know. There's not a lot of platformers around like that. I mean, Nintendo have always been good with that, but like it seemed that era of like PlayStation games was like all that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know what changed. I mean, I guess it's just like the demographics change. I I think it it like started with like fucking Halo and Call of Duty and stuff. I don't know. I I remember it being like Halo. Is whenever PlayStation and Xbox like really started like going at it with each other, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. With like the types of games that that they were putting out and everything became like, um, you know, way more difficult and way more geared towards like 
an older audience um and they sort of were like these gamers are the gamers that were with us whenever we st first started getting like really popular so now we're gonna make games for them as they get older while nintendo was just sort of like we're just gonna um, do the mario and i mean i only have nintendos so yeah. <laughs> They can literally just make Mario forever and people just buy yeah. it. It's like... <laughs> I mean, I honestly, like, I'm definitely one of those people that is, like, I hands down love Nintendo and mm. I'll play their games forever. I, I am really happy, though, with, like, the Switch. Um, they seem to be, like, switching things up. Oh, but, God. um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But they seem they just seem to be like taking it taking a different approach to things and it, it everything seems like really fresh, so yeah. that's good. Nintendo have a good way of approaching things differently in like trying new things out whenever people are too like scared to or worried about money to like try new like directions and stuff. Yeah, it's really weird to think like uh Nintendo is like trying all of these new things, but then like everyone else is like, We're remaking Crash, we're remaking <laughs> Spyro. We're <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I don't know. It's just weird, like, how different companies are. Are they remaking Final Fantasy VII? Yeah. I, don't ask me when it's out, though. <laughs> like, they, that's pretty much, like, a work in progress for a long time, isn't it? Yeah, but what they're doing is to... So they're not, so not... So people aren't waiting, like, five years for the whole game to come out. They're releasing, do you know, like, it was split into discs? Uh-huh. They're releasing like the discs, and then you'll get an individual disc sort of thing. But like, the games like scaled up to real life scale, so they have to do it like that. Otherwise, people will be waiting for like forever for it. Hmm. So like, say yeah. everything that happens in disc one, you'll play for the first part, and then because obviously the world map's going to be like, not like it was in the game. It's going to be fucking huge. So huge, yeah. So I'm, excited. I'm excited to see that. Um, yeah. Did you see I, the the brief footage you've shown so far? Yeah, yeah. I th I mean, I think it looks great. Yeah. Um, I've never been like crazy into Final Fantasy, but I do like them. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see it. I'll probably play it. It's one of those things where, I mean, I'm a massive fan, but the fan base like ruins it a bit for me. I mean, it doesn't ruin it, but like, I can't interact with the fan base because they just become really annoying. And I guess it's the same for a lot of things, but that... yeah, it's the same for like a lot of things. Like, one of my favorite games ever is Undertale, and like, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> that <laughs> fan base mm. is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And I mean, obviously, there's a lot of like really awesome people that just like the game, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> but um, people just get too serious about stuff. Get really wrapped up in it, don't they? Yeah, they just get wrapped up to it with it, and it's just like it's it's really just a game. Like just have fun, or you know, don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it seems to be the demographic of people who go mad about Undertale or like live on Tumblr, and that's yeah, like, that's a massive stereotype. But I think it is largely true. <laughs> so yeah, well, it's like. A lot of platforms that artists use, and I don't know if it's like artists themselves that are so critical and fucking insane whenever it comes to being in fan bases and stuff. But yeah. damn, just calm down, have a good like, have a good time. Yeah, I don't know. The game's here if you're entertainment, just chill out and just have fun. Yeah, with it. <laughs> calm down, please. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Undertale goes the direction of Deviant Art, doesn't it? Really, with their fan base. Yeah, well, they're, they, I mean, I don't know, because DeviantArt's sort of dead. Um, well, yeah, I meant, like, the sort of people that sort of... Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's DeviantArty. It's DeviantArty people. Yeah. No, no offense. That's, a, that's a slur. That's, like, just too, to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm DeviantArtist, but... <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I remember when I... I went to apply to the university I ended up going to, and like, they said that some of the applications were like just people who'd printed out like the DeviantArt stuff. <laughs> and, and it was like a proper like art, game art design course, so, like really hard to get into. And like, people had turned up with like OCs of like themselves as like furries and wolves and stuff. And it's just, oh my god, <laughs> can you imagine? 
<laughs> they just print out like their deviant art bio. Yeah, just like the whole page is printed out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like okay. With their like fifteen followers. With all like their adoptables just there on the front. Yeah, page. their adoptables. <laughs> their adoptables are up there. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to speak to the dean because I signed my application to this college and I've made over $25 making adoptables on TV art for like a year and a half and I just don't understand why I wasn't accepted into the school. <laughs> Was it the... Sincerely, uh... Grace the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's more like, like a Shadow Eclipse the Hedgehog 97 free pass and that's what So it's like... <laughs> combination of like, all our fandoms. you know that Shadow the Hedgehog is 55 years old? Oh like, my god. Canonly? Yes, <laughs> I've, we've talked about this extensively. <laughs> it's ridiculous though. When did we find that out? That's like the biggest revelation ever. I don't know. Was that you that I found that out with? I remember talking to you about it. I don't know if you knew it before, like, you talked about it. But, god, Jesus. Hold on. I don't understand, because isn't Sonic supposed to be like 16? <laughs> yeah, something radical. Yeah, so what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah. But, but isn't Shadow like a clone of him or something? Um, let me see. Cause like, Shadow the Hedgehog uh, is a fictional character, blah blah blah. Um, <laughs> 50 year old man. I guess he, he was artificially created. Okay. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's 55. <laughs> he's an old man. He's getting on a bit. Hanging around with 16 year olds. Wait, are you okay? <laughs> Have you found something? Oh, it doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> I, I'm done talking about it. Yeah. I think um, on that first sketch brew we did, we talked about Sonic a lot, and I was kind of burnt out about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah, there's always a lot to talk talk about with Sonic, but I'm just going to opt out because Shadow the Hedgehog has me feeling real ill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's broken my mouth a bit. <laughs> Got me real concerned. <laughs>
tiny heads, but like because the models are really like low poly and stuff. They're like Yeah, they also show their buttholes to you. Do they? Yeah, they take their pants off and they show their buttholes to you. Oh my god. I haven't paid attention. <laughs> to pay more attention because they go into their little tents and then whenever you blow oh them, you mean oh yeah yeah i thought you were talking about the dragons because i was talking about the <laughs> no <laughs> i was like jesus christ what did i miss <laughs> but you rescue it from the statue and it just does that <laughs> spiral the dragon near the buttholes <laughs> it's like is this how you repay me for like <laughs> rescuing you yeah no it's the little the little guy the little norks <laughs> Yeah, the norks. Yeah, me and Andy were laughing about that because they, yeah, they go into the tents and then you like you flame it and then they're just there like <laughs> exposing themselves. It's yeah. Like, well, this is uh, this is awkward. Yeah, they they're like, this is my butthole. I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> and it's like that's how I wanted to go. Like in real life. <laughs> just, like, just like my everyday life. <laughs> oh god. So apart from like Spire and stuff, is there any other games you're looking forward to? Um, well, obviously, like I just said, Honor Tales coming out for the Switch. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm really into Stardew Valley. Um, yes. Yeah, I have 908 hours on that game. Oh my god. Uh, and <laughs> 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 they're, um, he is releasing like new content uh, soon. I think this summer. I'm not sure, but um, it's gonna be like multiplayer, and I think that he's adding some more um, NPCs in like discoverable areas. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Sweet. That's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be fucking cool. I'm gonna have such a cool fucking farm. Are you gonna have it on Switch, or are you gonna just like? Um, I'm probably gonna get it on Steam. Okay, um, that's good because it means I can play it. You know. Yeah, it, it, like my main my main farm is on uh, Steam. I'm not sure if I want to like start a new game. Yeah. Um, just for that purpose, so that I don't know. Th that's one of the well, that's one of those games where I could start it over like over and over and over again and just never get bored of starting it over again. It is a game though that I get bored if I don't start over. So like I just can't keep continuously playing it. Yeah, I um, just run out of things to do and stuff. Yeah. But I'm pretty excited for the new content. Um, other than that, I'm sure that there is. I just can't think of anything, like, off the top of my head. Um, there is this one game that's coming out. I, I'm, I feel so bad because I can't remember um, the name of it. I want to say it's called, like, Kinseed or something. I don't know. No, I feel like an idiot because I brought it up and I don't know what the fuck it's called. Well, explain it to me. I might know it. I don't know. It's like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's called Kinseed. I found it. Okay, cool. Um, it's a sandbox game. Um, and it's got like really, really pretty pixel art. Um, I guess they did like a Kickstarter for it. Um, okay. But it looks really cool. I'm trying to find some more information about it because I feel like an idiot for bringing it up and not knowing any about it. So basically, it's like I'm such a loser. Okay, so you you yeah, it's an adventure farming. Um, like you get you can have a family, run your own ta tavern, apothecary, blacksmith, good store. So you like get to sort of choose your own adventure. Um, I don't know. It just seems like a really cute little game. What's it look like? Like, what's the sort of art style? Is it sort of like Stardew Valley-ish? Is it pixely or? Yeah, it's 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 pixelated. Um, it's pixel art. It's really beautiful. Um, it's nice and colorful. Um, it's another game where like seasons come into play. So like, oh, there's, cool. yeah. Um, like the, and I guess like the the point of it is that like it's an aging world so like your decisions change how the world is and also like things grow old and die and like don't oh, come God. back oh, yeah so um i'm really excited about it i think it's gonna be really good you'll really like that but yeah i know but they, <laughs> i can just imagine if i played that i'd be so stressed out if things were like dying around me <laughs> 
everything that you love is <laughs> like you just spend just it. like real life <laughs> <laughs> wow i came here to escape it's like the world's just like falling to bits so good <laughs> jesus <laughs> so what's that called kinsey is that yeah kinsey it's kin k-y-n-s-e-e-d oh, oh edgy uh, yeah uh, to anybody that's listening to this, go check that out. It's really like really beautiful looking. I'm not 100 percent sure when it's coming out, but um, yeah, go look at it. Cool. It's gonna be cool. I'm gonna look that up. Um, was there anything else? Was there any other big games like on the Switch coming out soon? Um, I guess everyone's really excited about Smash. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I suck at Smash, so... Yeah, I can't play it. <laughs> I, like, I, I, like, think it's... I can play it for maybe, like, 30 minutes, and then after a while, I'm like, I'm gonna throw up. There's too much going on on the screen. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, if you can handle that game, all the more to you. But yeah. I definitely can't. But uh, there's, a, I mean, obviously, a ton of people are, like, super pumped about that. I think that there's Pokemon RPGs coming. Yes. To the main console to switch, which is going to be amazing. Yeah, have we heard any more information about that, or just Nothing. kind of been like it's common? They literally they literally revealed that they're working on it, and then that was it. So it's like, cool. thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's like, thumbs up, thank you. But yeah, but yeah, because if the the they did reveal that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were the last Pokemon games on the 3DS, so it looks like they're just making the move to main console now. Because Switch is obviously like handheld as well, so. Yeah, oh, I don't understand, like, I don't use my Switch handheld because I'm too paranoid that I'm gonna lose it or, like, drop it in fucking sauce or something. Just, <laughs> just dip it in some chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I, I thought that this was my breadstick. <laughs> Damn it. Beating it with your soup. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I definitely don't use it as handheld, but, like, is the, are the DSs doing just as well still? Like, are they still pumping those out, or are they just done with that? I, I think they still sell well, because it's still, like, one of the most successful handhelds after, like, the DS did, like, amazing. So... Yeah. So, I don't know, are they coming out with, like, a new version, or is it just sort of like, okay, 3DS forever. Good <laughs> goodbye. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? How are they going to do it? I don't think... I don't know. I literally don't know, because, like, Nintendo brings out, like, reveals, like, handhelds, like, really, like, abruptly. Yeah, yeah, they they bring them out like all the time, and also I found it interesting that Nintendo's like really been pushing to leak over into like mobile. Yeah. Um, yeah. With like pocket, uh, pocket cam. And, <laughs> I've um, never played that game. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So real quick, I went to pick up some art prints the other day, and um, I saw one of the um, like employees that work there. Yeah. Um, I hadn't seen her in a really long time, and. I was getting some prints done for like Pokemon Go because yep. a lot of people that I know still play it. Um, and she brought, she was like, "Yeah, once Pocket came, Pocket Camp came out, I like stopped playing Pokemon Go completely." And I was like, "Yeah, my friend Dan, he says he's on like level sixty-five, and I think that's completely fucking insane because I stopped <laughs> playing it." Uh, and she was like, "I'm on level 82. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought yeah. I was bad. That's, Damn. What is the highest level? Can you just keep playing forever? <laughs> just keep I don't know. Up? I don't know. I mean, I I think I got to level 15 and I was like, I'm bored. The thing is, right, the reason I play it so much is because I'm like really into like collecting stuff. So if a game has yeah. collectibles, I like want to have them all. And the thing about Pocket Camp is you can keep playing it without having to like spend actual money on the like, yeah. on microtransactions. So yeah, like, I don't like, I, I'm i super into collectibles, too, and I don't know what it is that just made me so interested in it. And I think it's just that I have a really hard time with mobile games. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's, like, that I'm so connected to everything else through my phone that I don't feel like I'm being immersed in it. Maybe that's what it has to do with it. Yeah, I get that. I mean, because, yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, with me, like, I don't, like... Amazement. It does. It does definitely feel different. Like when you're playing like on a console or like kind of a handheld or whatever, you feel like you're actually playing a game, like you get involved into it and stuff. But on mobile, it's more like I just switch my brain off and just collect shit mindlessly for like like yeah, half an hour. Yeah, I don't, 
like I don't know. Like I stopped playing Pokemon Go because I got bored with that. I stopped playing Pocket Camp. But I mean, I guess whatever. I play a shit ton of fucking Atomi games, dating simulators. Yeah, yeah, on my phone. So I guess it's just the type of game. I don't know. Yeah, it's just whatever you're into. Yeah. Have you found any more uh, dating sim games since? Um. No, oh, well, I, I found that one. I found the speed dating for ghosts, but that was like oh, yeah. um, That was really good. If you, uh, like, I really recommend that. It's not like a weird dating game for like 14 year old girls to <laughs> look at hot anime boys. It's just this really um, like whimsical game where you're, you just recently died and you're trying to like find new people to hang out with while yeah. you're dead. And they're all ghosts, obviously. Um, and it's just cool. There's a lot of cool characters. Um, and it's so fucking funny as well, because you show me it. <laughs> yeah, it's super funny. It's super. a super funny game. Um, it's, it's simple, ridiculous. it's fast. So if you're, you know, looking for something fun and quick, I would take a look for it, like, Speed Dating for Ghosts on Steam. Yeah. Cause they it, it is expensive, though. It's pretty expensive for what it is. That's, oh, really? that's the only thing that I have to say about it. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, it, it's worth the 10 bucks. If you have 10 bucks to spare and you have a, a, a night that you're bored. Yeah, you're, check you're it out. Shot. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. Um, We'll probably wrap up soon-ish, but I was going to say, what was going to say? Do, do, do. Um, oh yeah, a game I was going to get was the second Nino Cooney. Did you ever play Nino Cooney on PlayStation 3? No, Trip? I never did. What's that? It's um, the Studio Ghibli made game. And oh, like, no, you told me about it, though. I never played it. I always bring it up because I, I knew it's a game that you'd really love. Because it's like... Um, it's, yeah, it's essentially it's like Studio Ghibli made a game. And it's sort of like JRPG-ish, but like... It's not like like really intense JRPG, so it's like really easy to play and stuff. And you have um, and you get, it's sort of like a bit Pokemon-y because you like there's these monsters in it and you can tame them to call you familiars, but it's not like exactly like Pokemon. It's because it, you can still control your characters and like use magic with them and stuff. But it's really really cool. Oh, that does sound really cool. Yeah. I I think that you sent me a link to it to like just look, check it out once. Mm -hmm. Um, but so they're they're are they re remastering it or are they just re-releasing it? Um, no, they've brought out a sequel, which has come out like literally in the last few weeks. Oh, okay. Um, this I think it's pretty much the same, but it's like a different story of different characters, but it's set in the same world because it's sort of like a sort of magical world sort of thing. The, the first one's really cool though because it started off in sort of like the real world, and um, the characters in it were tied to a living person in the other world, so like the two worlds were connected. So like you could find that the person's other. And then sort of like save them in that world, and it saved them in the other sort of thing. And it was really oh, cool. That's cool. It was really yeah. neat dynamic because I think the main story was like you play as this little boy. I forgot his name actually, but we play as a little boy, and he's like his mum's like ill and dying, and I'm not sure if she dies near the start. And like you find out she's like this great sage in like the magical world, and you have to find out what happened to her sort of thing. And it's really really good. <laughs> that's my review. <laughs> it's really really good. It's really good. <laughs> Diet now. <laughs> Five star. <laughs> five dance five star reviews. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, there's not really any games I'm looking to get really. I'm not really. I don't know. Apart from Spyro, <laughs> I keep going on about that. Yeah, apart from Spyro, who knows when it's gonna come? I probably uh, end up playing a load of PS1 games with Andy for the uh, for his channel, so I'll get to play Medieval and stuff. That'd be cool. Are you guys going to play Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? Um, possibly, yes. Wow. But, uh, stay, oh yeah. You stay away from me with that. I'll, uh, I'll show you. I'll, you'll be the first to see the video. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it first then. Um, that yeah. was a monster awesome. Well, speaking of that, um, we haven't really done any features on the show because obviously you're a guest host, so we're uh, just easing you into it sort of thing while we chat about whatever. So, but like we, do, we usually end the show with something called Andy's 60 Second Scramble. He does a ramble using his mandible, it's Andy's 60 Second Scramble. Mm -hmm. And it basically involves Andy having to summarise a game, usually a rubbish one, in 6 seconds, and I time him, and he has, you have to basically summarise slash review it. 
in that amount of time. Do you reckon you could do that? Uh, no, I can't do it. But you're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, and here's why. Oh, go on. Because Harry Potter, the Sorcerer's Stone, the video game, gave me post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's why, this is why it gave me post-traumatic stress disorder, because it's literally a smorgasbord of fuckery. The whole game <laughs> is a smorgasbord of fuckery. Put and on the cover. <laughs> the controllers are completely fucking insane. Nothing makes any sense. Nothing is... It doesn't even follow, like, Harry Potter anything. <laughs> and then... At the end, when you're trying to beat it, it just freezes and freezes and freezes and doesn't work. And then you gotta get on your bed, jump on your PlayStation 2 and break it, and you can't play your PlayStation 2 games anymore. That's my 60 seconds. Did you do it in 60 seconds? Because I wasn't even timing it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that was it, because that was pretty good. See, if I knew you were going to start off saying you have post-traumatic stress, I would have pressed the timer. <laughs> That was the cue. <laughs> okay. If I ever guest, if I'm ever a guest again, then we can, we can try again. To be honest, that that's pretty much what, we, what you did then was pretty much what Andy did, or does. Yeah, but that was a true tale. I know, but exactly, it's made it even better. <laughs> I think the last on the last show that I released today, at the end, Andy did in Bugs Bunny, a thief in time or something. And like the whole point of it was Andy didn't even only played up to the second level and got up to the mafia level and couldn't do it and then he had to like, try and like fit everything else in about the game. <laughs> <laughs> even though he hadn't even barely played it. <laughs> so, you know, it's not exactly like the most in depth coverage. You've only got six seconds, so I think you did a pretty good job, even though you weren't even trying to. Well, thanks. I was <laughs> born for it. Born into this life. Yeah, I was born into this shotcast. <laughs> um, before we go, do you want to like promote anything more or talk about anything else? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 no, like you said before, if you want to check out my comic, it's called uh, Detached. It's on Tapas. Um, you can check out some of my artwork on Instagram at Angela Odling, and then I'm also on Patreon at Angela Odling as well. So. Okay, cool. It was it was nice to meet meet all of you. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Well, it's not anymore because you just placed it like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Get off my show. <laughs> oh yeah, one one last thing before you go. Um, we usually end the show with a song, but like usually a game related song. Is it some specific game music that you really like that I can put on the end? Uh... If not, you can tell me afterwards, and I'll put it on. <laughs> Um, oh jeez, oh man, Bone Trussel uh, from Undertale, I like that. Okay, cool. I'll okay. stick that on. Alright. Okay, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Speak to you next time. Okay, bye. Bye bye.
This week's Andy and Dan Shotcast was brought to you by the Chill Creative Team, Danji's Designs, and a network of awesome. Don't forget that as well as YouTube, you can also find me across all my other social media, which I will link in the description. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Speak to you next time.